Hey YouTube, how you doing? I'm Ted, and this is the Black Pearl Voyager channel. Hey, the reason I'm uh, producing this video here is because recently I've uh, found a minor difficulty with the gladiator. Uh, it isn't anything inherently wrong. Um, when they come from the factory, they're usually ready to go. The problem I've been having is getting out into traffic. Um, if you've watched any of my earlier videos, you will know that weight is an issue with uh, overlanding vehicles, and I was fully conscious and aware of that, which is why I chose the soft topper um, as a cover. It probably weighs less than 20 pounds. The uh, Dayton Metal Fabricators um, rack over soft topper is really about the only option you have that actually fits around and was designed to fit around the soft topper. It comes in at about 85 pounds. So we're looking at a little over 100 pounds um, so far. And then I put the FSR M55 series tent on top, which is a little over 100 pounds. Uh, recently, I've been traveling back and forth to Primeville, so I've been carrying three, gal uh, three extra gallons of fuel, uh, which is about 18, gal 18 pounds, on the rack. And um, two extra gallons of water, another roughly 18, 19, 16 pounds of water um, in the rotopacks on the rack. I've got my Max Tracks, they don't weigh a lot. A little shovel and an awning. I guess what I'm getting at is that I've got about 250 pounds above the bed of the truck. So naturally it's going to be a little bit top heavy. I didn't really start noticing um, the additional sway <laughs> until I uh, actually did a full loadout of all of our gear uh, my uh, Monica and I on board and uh, I started noticing that uh, getting out into traffic quickly like saying uh, turning right or left into traffic was um, beginning to get a little scary uh, and it's not something that the, can, that I can just you know put my foot in it and get going without it uh, without noticing that there is a noticeable pitch and sway uh, due to the out of weight. So that's where we are now. I've been having a little trouble getting in, out into traffic and uh, when I come to a corner that's marked 45 I better be doing 45 and uh, yeah fortunately there's a cure for all this and this is what you're going to need for your gladiator if you build it like I did so I was driving home from Prineville the other day and uh, we're in the Gladiator, it's my wife and myself and the dog, full tank of gas, full loadout in the back, um, seven gallons of uh, water, uh, five inside and two on the rack, and three gallons of fuel, and so I thought, well, let's pull into the scale here and see what it weighs, and to my surprise, uh, we came in at a whopping 6,700 pounds. <laughs> According to the GVWR on the uh, Jeep here, the uh, max GVW shouldn't exceed 6,250. 
So we are roughly, what, 450 pounds overweight. So that's why they refer to us as overloaders. I mean overlanders, overloaders, yeah. Yeah, we're slightly overloaded. And so I uh, opted for the Hellwig um, torsion bar here to replace the stock hollow torsion bar with this solid steel um, chrome molly um, torsion bar, sway bar. So we're going to be putting that in today and uh, I'll get back with you and let you know what performance differences we've had. So hang in there. So you can tell by the smashed end there of that sway bar that that's a hollow sway bar. Um, I'm also kind of surprised to see that they swedged on something there to keep the sway bar from moving back and forth. I guess I shouldn't be surprised. The new Hellwig uh, comes with something similar. So it looks like a fairly easy install. I'll just have to disconnect the top of that end link there and there's a couple of bolts there and uh, there's already a relocation bracket from an earlier install that I did from the lift that I did. Um, the only challenge there is going to be to get a socket small enough around that it will fit inside that hole there where the bolt is countersunk. So that may be giving me a little bit of trouble. But the new Hellwig rig or gear is uh, uh, solid steel, chrome molly, and uh, I'm pretty sure that's going to take care of the issue I'm having with uh, a little added extra instability in corners. Okay, so this just arrived here from Hellwig. And um, this is their complete rear stabilizer kit. Um, they have not made a sway bar for the front of the JL or the JT. They haven't developed one yet. Uh, the issue being that the Gladiator in particular needs help in the back and not so much in the front. And so this is a complete kit. And what I mean by that is it's just not just the sway bar that you see there. Solid steel. But it also comes with the extended um, sway bar links. Uh, this is brand new. Um, and this is uh, some kind of neoprene, I'm sure. Pretty heavy duty stuff. Nice, thick, very thick clamps. You get a bag of uh, hardware, including grease and Loctite. And then you get a couple of uh, these clamps here that are designed to keep the bar from shifting back and forth. So. There'll be some alignment uh, alignment fun to do too, but uh, it's not a very hard kit, and it's something I should do in about an hour or so. Yeah, it looks like one page of instructions. Uh, well, it's actually stapled together. Yeah, pretty good pictures, but uh, I really don't need any too much help there. Looks like I'll be pounding in some bushings into the uh, ends of the. Uh, Sway bar links, and then here's some written instructions. I'll go over it just for fun, make sure I don't miss anything. But otherwise, looks like a pretty easy install. I was kind of hoping for a sticker. No, we didn't send me any sticker. I know they got stickers anyway. So sad. Too bad. So we've got our end links here. These are the female and the male. And we have two different types of rubber. 
these feel a little more rubbery. These are definitely stiffer. These go in the male end, which will be at the top. Comes with uh, plenty of grease. So we'll just go ahead and grease up the end of one of these. And we'll grease up the middle a little bit too to prevent corrosion inside. And we should be able to just take this. And a dead blow hammer. And it'll pop right in there. Only got to do that a couple more times. Yep. Sticky stuff. There we go. Okay, there's the uppers. Now we just have to figure out there's two different lengths of sleeves here, and I don't recall anything in the instructions about which one goes where. So we'll do a little experimentation. Looks to me like those go in there as you can see. And these are going to be a little bit longer. So let's just experiment with that a little bit and see if that's right. These are the females. And as you can see, they're quite a bit wider here. So we'll be using the longer bushing. And we'll just go ahead and grease that up too so it goes in nice and easy, hopefully. And these hardly require any effort at all. Well, I may have to press those in with the vise because inside here, the collar, this hoop, it's narrowed down. And of course, when you press this in then it becomes narrow too so even though this fits in very well here as soon as it gets to about the middle here it runs into an issue so we'll just do it like this and this will there we go and it just goes right in as you can see pretty as you please very easy once you get it started. So then we'll just spin the jam nut on here a little ways. Grease up one of the smaller collars here that go in the male end. And we'll do the same thing. I'm not going to even fight it. I'm just going to go ahead and put it in here and press it in with the vise. And in she goes. Very easy.
So this is something that you can do very easily at home if you've got even just the most rudimentary tools. I'm a little more equipped, better equipped than some people. And so here we have a completed end link. And uh, these are fully adjustable for a three to six inch lift. I'm about three. And uh, the final adjustment on these will be made once I get under there and figure out where the bar becomes level. But these are nice heavy duty. Um, and I'm pretty sure these are gonna last a long time. Here you have two completed end links and we'll determine the length uh, once we get the uh, sway bar on there and figure out about where it's got to go. Um, anyway, very easy to do, nothing complicated. So far so good. Okay, so now I'm just matching up hardware here. There's four of this type of bolt. And... Yes. Four of uh, these are brand new. These will replace the ones I remove with uh, uh, some kind of heavy duty washer. These replace the lower hardware, and you retain the upper hardware uh, for the end link upper hardware and reuse that. Don't really feel like crawling up underneath it to undo the uh, upper. So I've got a universal style joint here and uh, a long extension. Uh, the lowers are going to take an 18 millimeter and a 6 mil hex head. So hopefully we can drive them out with this. I may have to get them started with something else. Okay, you see this bolt right here. It's an 18, but it's on there pretty good. And uh, my little impact driver won't pull that off of there. But the long extension and the wobbler worked out. I just need to get something with a little more leverage. Something I can put some torque on that. Yeah, that's a long ways in there. So I had to get another extension. And hopefully I won't be hamstrung too much by the length of the extensions but that seemed to work out pretty good and so we'll just spin it the rest of the way out mischief managed these are a 14 and i grabbed just about every socket i had hoping i had it covered and of course i did not so the replacements believe it or not are 17s which is what 9 16 so well, maybe these aren't. There we go. Just got to get on there right. And once they're loose, I just spin them out. Like so. That's about it. Okay, so now what we have left to do is put a nice, good, healthy coating of grease inside here. Snap them over the bar here with the slits facing upward and Bob's your uncle so let's get some grease going on here god they gave me plenty I hope I greased everything up enough because I've hardly used any of this grease Okay, we're all greased up, I hope. I think I'm going to put some more in there. Okay, so we got our blue Loctite going here. And we need to Loctite all these bolts. And that's an 18, size 18. So... 
we'll get to that. Yeah, good luck getting it started, huh? There's no way to support it. But it doesn't need to be. It just needs to be started. For gosh sakes. Let's try it. Let's try the bottom one. All it has to be is close. All I have to do is get it started. Come on. There we go. Hopefully this is the right thread. Wow. Okay, check it out. Better check first. Because it doesn't seem to be the right thread. No, it's not. Different size thread. No, they're the same size. Different size thread. Different pitch. Something's different about it. Something is different about it. They look the same size. <sighs> Makes me wonder now if I've even got the right bolts. Okay, that one went in. That's the old stock one. The new one needs these bigger ones. And they are. Yes, it's the different size thread altogether. So that's not going to work. I'm going to have to use the old hardware, which I really don't want to do, but there we are. Okay, we just had to change our autofocus here to a zone. There we go. That's better. All right. So, we can't reuse our stock bolts, but we can reuse these. And hopefully I can get it threaded. Get it started this time. Yeah, I'm not sure what I'm fighting here. Let's tie the bottom hole. There we go. They're a little on the short side, so now see. Okay. Here's another problem I've run into. This bolt. This bolt fits through here just fine. But guess what? Doesn't fit through here with the shit. Well, that side did. Just when you think you're done. You're actually not. There's one more thing, and that's these isolators. I measured from the inside of the tire to the top of the broad here, and uh, evened it up by taking a dead blow hammer and bop it either one way or the other. And then you've got to put these in place. Last thing, everything's torqued, everything's cool. Uh, these are part of the kit, and uh, they even throw in, well, looks like a couple of tools to do it with, so, yeah, just when you think you're done. Now, it wasn't completely without its issues. Uh, for one thing, the relocation brackets that I mounted during the lift have a different thread than the bolts that were provided, so I had to put the stock bolts or the bolts that came with particular relocation uh, it's a bar is what it is I uh, had to use those but they torque to 46 pounds no problem and I don't see any problem with them uh, not being sufficient I suppose if they are uh, I can chase those threads out a little larger and make it fit um, also, I picked the middle hole to start with. You can 
put it back a little farther or forward just a little bit farther here it loosens it and here it tightens it I put it right in the middle just to kind of be as a uh, yeah a midpoint <laughs> and if it's not quite what I want or if it's too stiff I've got a little bit of adjustment the problem is is I actually had to take a half inch drill and actually drill one of these out so that I could fit this bolt through here so uh, it wasn't completely without its uh, hassles but uh, we got it done if you've got even the most basic tools and uh, a little bit of knowledge a little bit of skill with with them uh, you should be able to do this no problem so just going to finish this up and that's it pretty easy install but not without its little issues it would have been a little easier if I suppose if I'd had a ramp to work on work under but it, I didn't so it doesn't really matter and uh, these I'll place them with the heads here at the back so that they don't fill up with dirt so bad or if they get bumped it doesn't destroy them to the point where they're unusable so that's it next will be a road test and uh, I'll report on that and let you know um, if I notice a difference I expect I will just trying to get an even gap so we're not overstressing one side or the other so that's good and snug they're aluminum with stainless steel hardware and that'll keep it from drifting back and forth okay one more to do and it's a done deal once and for all <laughs> thanks for watching okay that's the whole thing It's in there. Also, they don't tell you, they give you eight great big washers, but they don't tell you really where to put them, or if I didn't read the instructions well enough. But uh, I figured out a pattern. Actually, I put one of them up here behind the upper, and I used three here on the lower. Uh, one behind the nut, and then between the uh, the link for three so anyway that's it done deal okay well what's the verdict well for such a small effort uh, the benefits were huge and I mean huge uh, this thing corners nearly flat as a matter of fact I may adjust the bar so that it's a little more forgiving but for right now with the adjustment about mid-range uh, I'm enjoying it uh, uh, recently I uh, went to Prineville um, there's a lot of windy mountain roads and generally when a corner is marked as 45 miles per hour you can take that at 50 or even 55 depending on what kind of vehicle you're in uh, the uh, 45 mile an hour speed limit or whatever it's rated at is generally a most comfortable speed to take a corner in where you don't feel much g-force and it's uh, you don't have to worry too much about um, losing control or anything like that uh, in the Jeep, uh, it was not scary, but pronounced, we'll say. Now, um, I can fly through these corners as though it were empty, just nearly. Yeah, this Hellwig torsion bar uh, really made a difference. And due to yours, what I did to mine, and get some weight up high, and fill the bed with camping gear, um, 
and a refrigerator full of beverages, you're probably going to need to do this. Um, I bought this outright. I'm not sponsored by Hellwig yet. Um, I was a little disappointed. I wanted to buy a full set, uh, one for the front and one for the rear. But uh, as I mentioned earlier, they have not yet developed a front sway bar for the JT or the JL. So I bought this with my own money at Auto Anything, and uh, they had about the best price around. I got this complete bar kit for a little over $350, um, and uh, what a world of difference it made. Um, yeah, it was uh, money very well spent. So, like I said, if you're going to do to yours what I've done to mine, you really should think about upgrading that hollow stock sway bar for this Hellwig Chrome Molly solid steel bar. It's uh, beautifully made. It's uh, about twice the weight of the um, stock bar. And the only downside I can think of is that it is a little less forgiving on an uneven surface so for instance if you're driving down a road that's a little rough in spots this bar is going to be a little less forgiving where you have terrain features or bumps or anything that's going to make one side respond differently than the other you will feel that um, I noticed it uh, right away and I guess you could consider it a downside because it makes the ride slightly stiffer on a road surface that's not in good repair you might notice a difference there so that's all I have for this video I hope you enjoyed it if you did like and subscribe comment if you like I'm not monetized probably never will be I just do this because um, I use influencers like you to make critical decisions on my projects, and I do so appreciate it. So, until next time, this is Ted. This, this is the Black Pearl Voyager channel, and I will see you again on the next video. Thanks for watching.